Hey, everybody out there. Thank you for joining us. My name is Kenneth Nelson. I'm here with Gregory Claghorn and Mark Skinner, and no. we are the three black prep rats with photography talk. Uh, today's uh, discussion centers around supporting statements and what we've been tasked to do. And it was my concept, which was that we would all bring uh, three up to three images uh, to the uh, episode and bring a supporting statement uh, or AKA also known as a artist statement to support the images. So if you're out there when you're as you're out there now and you're listening and you're looking at it, um, we want your opinions as well as to what your opinion is about the supporting statement as it is combined with the images. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know your critiques as well. And we appreciate it and we'll be uh, glad to reply to them. OK, with that, um, the first person up to uh, show us their images and the supporting statement is first, Greg. First person up to to submit to the torture. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, okay, so Greg, I will put your first image up now and you can begin to... Whenever you're ready. You got it? You're, okay. Now. All right. If not now, when? Shall I wait on my copper becomes patina? If not now, when? I want my life to renew like an early spring. If not now, when? Shaking fall and winter like a cold covered tarpaulin. If not now, when? Every day I wait, I'm faced with another challenge along my way. If not now, when? I must find a way today to keep from being picked and pecked. And if not now, when? Fighting my, for my place in the sun. If I don't fight, my fight will never be won. If not now, when? Today is my day for hope. That's it. And Nelson, I swear, if you do this thing again. <laughs> A hundred words or less, or hundred yeah. words or more. You can't sure. just well, say right. it. Greg, I, I'm teary-eyed. Uh -oh. uh -oh. You're teary-eyed. Really? Yeah, I'm really, I'm, it's, that's really, really much better than what I had to say. And so, <laughs> therefore, don't compare. I'm really, don't compare. Yeah. Well, yeah, Mark, we, yeah, you've already, don't, don't, yeah, don't give anything away with us. But, okay, so Greg, what yeah. was your thought process behind combining the words with the images? Well, 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 ooh, Nelson, I swear, sometimes I can't stand some of your topics, but they are so thought provoking. After a while, after, after I stopped fighting it, um, <laughs> but you said, find a hundred words. Now, right. it's, it's bouncing around in my head, find a hundred words. Now, and then you say, mm, you're tasked with no less than a hundred words. So I'm thinking one way, keep it under 100 but it's more than 100 anyway right you know they say oh pictures worth a thousand words you know they're like in da vinci code it's like yeah but which words you know so then i'm like wait okay what images do you words with images words always images always evoke words but then when you're tasked with putting the words and then making the you know it's like back and forth and back and forth so i wanted to um, cause, okay. I mean, life, life is life and you're always going through something. Everybody's always going through something. So, um, what I've been going through lately is, uh, well, being out here on the West coast, you know, summer usually comes in January <laughs> people wearing flip flops and such, but it's been actually kind of cold and rainy and, you know, damp for, for like three, four days in a row, which is very unusual. You know, I hear the locals saying, oh, it's cold. And I'm like, shut up. You don't know if I'm cold. Um, so, but then it's like, you know, there's so many things that I've put in the ground, you know, so many seeds of, you know, moving forward, getting this change, you know, going to the next phase in my life. And I keep saying to myself, okay, next week it's going to be summer here in California, but then the next day it'll be like 85 degrees and breaking records. So I'm like, okay, right. 
if not now, when? What was my process? Then I was like, okay, I had a whole bunch of pictures. I, I misunderstood what you were saying in the uh, the task. And I wanted to do like a more of a, uh, you know, to, to nail the points of each thing that I was saying, if not now, when? But um, I, I thought that, you know, the, the constraint of the three images really, really, really kind of came together in that I saw, um, you know, just going out there and shooting, you know, which, which I, which I, which I wholeheartedly profess to, if you got a camera, it's not a camera unless you're taking pictures with it. That that's just me. So the, uh, last week I was out and about helping with, uh, the church is uh, doing their food drive, giving away food for the community. And I came across that picture with the, with the car covered with the tarp on, on, you know, behind this hedge with the grass. Mm -hmm. And it just looked so, it almost, it looked like it was like a tombstone, but it was okay. alive, you know, cause it was covered up. So they were trying to preserve it, but was it dead already? I mean, there was, you know, if they're not going to use it now, when are they going to use it? You know, are you talking about that beautiful car there? Oh, no. yeah, that one. You know, and uh, we had to had this discussion. Oh, you're saying, oh, it's a caddy, and I was like, no, you know, it kind of looked more, more like I was thinking Mission Impossible. It looked like the one of the Continentals around the same time. Sixty looks, looks like looks like a Fleetwood or a Coupe de Ville to me. No, that's a different line. They have different lines, and they had those Batmobile uh, tail lights and fun a funkier front front end too. So then, uh, when I was thinking that, then you know, just being out there looking and keeping my eyes open and the camera close by. I came up on the next one, you know, because uh, um, I finally broke down and got a set of tires. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, that, that almost looks like, I was like thinking continental, and boom, you know, the universe put a continental in my field of vision, you know, and I was like, you know, if not now, when? You know, I mean, is it, now that would definitely work, because somebody moved it there, you know, and uh, this is a service station. You know, it's like every, my life pretty much is at a service station. You know, I'm getting this fixed. I'm trying to work enough money to get to make it. Oh, boy, do I need that? The belt changed and the oil and the, what about the filter? You know, so it's one thing after another. And then this whole COVID thing, you know, with, uh, you know, you can't do this. You can't do that. You Okay, people with the vaccination. Okay, you can travel, but not over here. You know, and then it's like, well, if not now, when? You know, I'm like. You know, I could lay down, you know, or I could be, you know, God rest those folks and God bless those people in India, you know, where everything is resurging and people are just falling off like that. But, mm -hmm. You know, you could go. If not now, when? I mean, you could go tomorrow. You could go and, you know, you could seize up and, you know. But uh, my thing was like, keep pushing. If not now, when? Well, keep getting there, you know. And then uh, there was the announcement the other day. Uh, yesterday, actually, they were going to start reopening restaurants. If you have both vaccine vaccinations, you know, you could, you could go in public without your mask, you know, not not in crowds and such. But um, I love movies. Absolutely love movies. I love finding the biggest screen with the best surround sound system and just parking it in there with a big tub of popcorn and, you know, grease and salt, you know. And um, I kind of felt that was like a metaphor for, you know, um, Making a statement as not necessarily a, a true or a pure artist statement with any, but art speak and all that, which I'm probably doing right now, and I apologize. But um, so, I mean, just to support those three images, um, I just wanted to say that there's, uh, uh, you know, we live, we live in all three places. We live in the past, the present, and we're always planning for the future, or hoping uh -huh. for the future. You know? where, where we were, isn't who we are, but it's part of who we are. Who we are today and what we do right now is going to determine who we are in the future. So with all of that going on, and it's like the movie theater is still a movie theater. It's just not functioning as a movie theater, you know. And right now, I am ready for my new art re reopening soon. Okay. <laughs> so, Okay. Yeah, that's 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 where I was, and if, I don't know if you can see it. It's probably not the best photo, but I'm actually in that center marquee. Yeah, yep. yep. you can see that. Yep, you can. can see that. Yep. Yeah, so I'm my own little poster. Yeah. You, right are, you are your you are your own one sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you guys with these funky words and stuff. Okay, go ahead. You're the film major. 
Mm -hmm. A one sheet, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so from the perspective of the photographer, we understand, what would you want your viewer to come away with? With those As images? With well, the combination you know, of words and the images. What do you want your viewer to come away with? Um... Well, after have, after I, hearing I your words and seeing the images together. What I want them to come away with is, well, okay, well, first, um, you know, there's, there's a, uh, the idea of the vintage vehicles, the, ident the idea of uh, the preservation of them, you know, and uh, I, I wanted that first line, you know, shall I, shall I wait until my copper is patina? Sure, copper is beautiful the way it is when you lay it down but the whole thing doesn't really come together until it starts turning green and it gets that patina that protects it for the rest of its life okay you know so the the idea that that if you know you're here and i am but i'm getting seasoned forgive me for that um <laughs> i'm the patina that i'm getting on my life is you know, thank God I've made it this far, and it can continue to keep me further on. You know, as if I as I keep going. So, what I would want the viewer to see is the the value of the nostalgic or the age in things, but also the newness and in the renewing. Because even the um, the marquee, there's a there's a more modern marquee. Every every marquee, movie marquee I see nowadays, I kind of try to get to it and get a shot of it. Because once they reopen, you're not going to see that closed mm -hmm. for, you know, see and maybe, uh -huh. you know. So uh, there's one that's up the road from here. It's this giant Edwards, and it's modern and slick and this and that. But it's just kind of that, you know. I, I like this movie theater because it's it still got that kind of a, a hint to Art Deco and yep. age has gone by. But the, the, the hints towards the beautiful movies that came out of that era... You know, they, they make good movies nowadays, but they're they're if you're into the the filmmaking genre and the process and the look of you know uh, old Hollywood, nothing like it. Nothing like I, it. I have a design question for you, though, Greg. Go ahead. Please. The center, the the middle image was uh, the the big Lincoln in the sunlight. What um, what made you decide to tilt that so that the automobile is tilting toward the front of the car. I just wanted to give it a little dynamic dynamicism, dynamic dynamism. Give it a little more a dynamic dynamism. Look, you know, <laughs> as if it's as it's trying as if it's trying to move. You know, give it a little angle. I started, you know, squaring it up, but it was like, yeah, it looks kind of ordinary. You know, this is this car. This, you know, it's not in the greatest shape, but somebody loved that car. You know. So I wanted, I tilted it down a little bit. And actually I had, I had the option. I mean, I shot some from the other side of it so that the light is flush on it, but um, I didn't like it so much. I, I yeah, wanted the backlight's to, a nice, it's a nice touch. What is? The backlight. The backlight? Why, why do you say that? Oh, it looks the way the automobile was probably meant to be seen when originally produced. I think that's horrible light for a, to try to sell it, but okay, I, I can understand that. Well, it shows the long, lean lines of the new Lincoln, what was it, a town car, Continental, Continental's probably before the town car. Yeah, but I, I just, I just like the idea. The the backlighting also worked with having the repair shop in the background. That was that was my whole process because when I shot it from the other side. It was kind of green and trees, and it didn't really say anything but car in a parking lot. This one kind of, for me, okay. and what I wanted to purvey to the viewer is that somebody loved this car. It is really old, and it's at the repair shop. You know, there's a cycle that I was trying to show in this, and um, that was uh, that's really what I wanted to, to per portray for parlay to get across <laughs> okay okay anything right. else? mark anything else no that's all i had that's it. and again I, just had that, I had i had that i only had that one question and uh you know 
Okay. I really, I really love the one with the car cover. It reminds me of some other photos that I've seen with car covers. Mm -hmm. However, I think um, that you have done that the best that I have seen thus far. Well, thank you. In in of whom? I mean, that's the you've seen a lot of photographers now, so. I don't, well, I don't remember. I don't, honestly, I don't remember who, who. It just reminds me of uh, was it William Eggleston? The type of work that okay. that he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you. you know, because back back then, a lot of people when they bought really nice cars, they would put car covers on them, and you'd see them in the. At least in New York, you'd actually see them on the on the streets. You don't really see car covers so much anymore. Okay. Yeah, it, it's it. Car covers always kind of changed the flavor. You know, you knew it was a funky car under there. Somebody cared enough about it to to cover it up, unless unless you could see that the car was a piece of junk and it was rusting, and they covered it to keep from disintegrating. <laughs> yeah, I, I really want to know what kind of vehicle it is, whether it's a whether it's a really a Lincoln or something else. But it's good. I'm think I'm leaning towards Lincoln. That it's got longer longer lines, and the the caddies are more. Um, the one that I saw had uh, you know those funky rocket rocketish fins on the back end. Well, that's, that's a 50, that's, that's a fifty nine when they started getting a little old when they started getting a little newer the uh, the sixty one sixty two sixty threes the the fins slowly uh, went directly into the fender. Oh, okay, well, I mean, we could research it. We could definitely figure out what you know if you want to go down that road. But I, I just I just thought you know that it was interesting that the one one week I would see you know, the covered one. And then the next week, almost, I feel it was like the exact car, same car with, uh, you know, uncovered in a, in a, in a repair shop lot. So yeah, I enjoyed that. And think Kenny, you, who, who you did it again, you son of a, but I like that, you know, you, you definitely can, in, cause you put so many words in something that could be so simply said, yeah. three hundred words in three pictures. You could have done that in one sentence, but, the way you say right because i wanted there to be no ambiguity in how you would have understand to 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 come to the final the final solution because you know if i tell you blue you go, right yeah. you could give me 15 shades of blue instead of me saying no i want sky blue all right so you know there's this even sky blue is about 15 shades <laughs> <laughs> well you be in the alone. ballpark better than dark blue or navy so hey yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the sky could be that color too, but I'm leaving it alone. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, let's keep it moving, and let's go to Mark now for his uh, presentation. All right, here we go. Pageant photography is an area of photography that requires skills that span multiple disciplines. To work in pageantry, one must understand fashion. We have image number one. Well, if you're gonna do it that way. You should have image number one as opposed to. You said red dress. Mm hmm. That's not the red dress that's being shown right now. Right now we have our document. Okay. I'm sorry. That's bad, all right. Bad, 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 bad. Okay. No worries. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You want to start over again? I, I kind of sure. like the words. Yeah. Let's start over again. Okay. Mark? <laughs> all right. Here we go. Okay, hold it for a second, Mark. Let me. I apologize. That's okay. I had to okay, add the words. Ahead, Mark. Start over again. Here we go. Pageant photography is an area of photography that requires skill, skills that span multiple disciplines. To work in pageantry, one must understand fashion. Here we go. As a freelance photographer, one can find themselves shooting weddings, sports, and portraits. All photographic disciplines that when combined with the street photo aesthetic taught at Pratt would prepare him or her for the rigors of the pageant world. Then we have number two. Most of all, the pageant photographer must exhibit empathy and a genuine appreciation for their subject. Then you can go to number three. At the event, timing is all. The contestants stand nervously on stage, filled with anticipation and hopefulness. Once they know they've won, they know that not only have they won a pageant, but their lives will be changed forever. And that's it. Mm -hmm. I think I've transposed the uh, words forever and changed, but 
Basically, uh, I just want to say that, you know, I, I, you know, you hear me talk a lot about other disciplines, but for the most part, uh, I, you know, photographed a lot of, a lot of pageants, um, dozens, probably at this point, and uh, scores of individuals who are both contestants and winners of these pageants. And, uh, and everything I've said is, is true. I mean, I, I think it's a discipline, it's a, it's a, an activity that people uh, really enjoy uh, but it's been very much maligned because of uh, how it's portrayed. I don't want to say uh, in the media, but in, in certainly in, in film and in, in reality TV. Mm -hmm. That's really it. Right. So now you could have approached this in quite a few ways, but you decided to basically be literal about it. Yeah, the reason why is because I'm photographing people and 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 the and people who not only do I know, but people quite honestly who have been gracious enough to allow me to photograph them uh during uh a part time in their lives when they're they're competing, you know. And it, you know, it, it it takes a lot for someone to trust you to do that to take the photographs of them, you know, um while they're on stage, uh, photographs that they believe will help get them uh, photogenic awards. Right. Uh, in some cases, uh, maybe they'll get them an audition. You know, those are the types of, uh, you know, you, people put a lot of trust in you. So I want to honor the individuals who I photograph by, by you know, treating them with the respect and, and not goof around when I'm talking about uh, the work that I do uh, with and for them. So, I mean, I could have, I could have, been very poetic like Greg was. And like I said, what, what he had to say sounded so much better than the way I had to say what I said. But uh, I, I think um, I think in this case, it's just really important to, to really, you know, be on the level with everyone. Okay. Was there any consideration at all, even to the smallest, to be metaphorical? Uh, there was, but I don't think I would have done that with this type of imagery. I would have had to do, I would have had to show, uh, imagery where my, uh, you know, creativity was a little bit more, uh, in, you know, I've had more impact on the uh, final image. You know, e each of these photographs are, uh, sort of the fusion between, what I can create for the individual, given the time constraints and the and the space limitations and, and the lighting and all of that, and what they need to do, you know. I mean, in the first one, you know, we picked a location. We had to, you know, only so many, so much time to to photograph. Uh, and you have a variety of poses and so forth. I just selected one, and and you know that was really it. Okay, so is there any way to go through these and mm -hmm. just to Pick one, one, one to three words that are not as literal, but more figurative. Oh, my goodness. Right? Because I want to stretch this just a little bit because I'd like to stretch you to see if there could be any three words that you would use to describe these that are not literal descriptions, but figurative, figurative descriptions metaphorical descriptions or something that describes the, the idea or the imagery without being literal. You know, you could say the red dress, but could you say something like the elegance of something, you know, just to All give right. you a primer? Well, let, let's start with that one. Uh -huh. So happy I won. Is that four words? Is that too many? No, that's not too many. Okay. okay. All right. Let's, okay. The red dress. Okay. The red dress would be, um, this I look fantastic. Okay. 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 Right. Okay. All right. Blue dress. What was it? What was what were the words for that one? I look fantastic. Okay. That well well it's it's not a descriptive thing. So we're we're we'll we'll just right. So, so yeah. At that point, at that point, I put up putting words in the the model's mouth. At that point, but uh, all right. In this one, I'd say um um uh just you know all American. Okay. All right. Okay. How do you feel now that you've had that little exercise to sort of pull something out of the thin air? Well, uh, it's a little bit uh, difficult because right. they, you know, each of those individuals are uh, people I consider clients. So right. you don't really want to find yourself saying, you know, uh, anything that is uh, 
too far from uh, you know how they might want to feel you know they 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 how they feel. Yeah, but when we, I mean, unless you sort of consider, um, most poetry is really actually well, I can't say most, but a lot of poetry is considered romantic to some degree. Mm-hmm. So I would say that any poetry you would associate with these uh, that are metaphorical would actually be kind of nice. Well, it would, but but here's the thing. I, I'm tasked with making people look their best. Uh-huh. And uh, as someone who is in a very much longstanding relationship, uh-huh. now 31 years, uh-huh. uh, you know, you, you don't want to find yourself... Uh, you know, waxing too poetically about any individual who you are not is not your significant other. So right. at a certain right. point, at a certain point, you know, you have to say, okay, I made this individual look their best. I let them choose what they were going to wear, or we found something for them to wear. And you look, you you know, there's a, a threshold where you go, this is a job. You're making them look their best, and then you don't get attached. You know, it's like even even when I'm photographing. Uh, my own kids, you know, there's a point where I have to kind of detach from making them look like cute kids all the time okay. and, and trying to make sure that they look like uh, they're actors or models or whatever it is that they're going to be uh, you know, using that photo for. Okay. But it seems, it sounds like what, you know, Ken asked for something else and you gave him the ABC again. There's no metaphorical. Uh, well, it wasn't, it wasn't find wasn't hundred metaphor. words. I found my hundred words. Yeah, and then, and then think, he said, "Give me two or three or for each one." And I, I, you know, off the cuff. That's what I what I say because I don't get. I don't really don't get emotionally attached to this type of work. It's really, um, I do the job. I do it to the best of my ability at the time, and I present the work, and that's really it. Yeah. Right. I, I I don't know how you do that. Right, I mean, because as Mark, a human let's... being, how do you shut off your emotions? I, I don't understand that. At all. Well, well, because you know, because my emotion is attached to, you know, the proficiency, the actual task, getting the photograph, getting there to get the photograph, making sure uh, we get enough materials so that the client has what they need. Um, you know, my what I'm emotionally attached to is becoming more proficient with each shoot. I'm not emotionally attached to the subject. And if it is someone I'm attached to, like my, my kids or my spouse, um, I try to kind of remove that a little bit for the type of work that I'm doing. Yeah. So you're into creative writing, right? That is correct. Right. So how do you express within creative writing how do you how do you see yourself being expressive within the creative writing when, with the creative writing that you do, because you are creating something out of nothing? Oh, which, in that case, which I think is sure. quite similar to waxing poetically to a certain degree. Well, waxing poetically about a photograph, you are imposing thoughts on an existing subject, whether it's a person or a thing or a place. And so, you know, one of the exercises that I do remember doing at Pratt was when I took a series of photographs um, in a small, uh, small New England town where my wife went to college. And, you know, I took a few photos and I made a little story. And uh, I remember what the instructor was like, wow, that's really pretty good. And, and, I, and I, even though it was an interesting exercise, I found that because I was taking photographs rather than making photographs, I didn't specifically select the the location. I didn't specifically select what the person was doing. There's a, it didn't seem like it had the same integrity uh, as either, you know, photographing someone and making them look their best or creating something completely out of nothing. Meaning when I write creatively, and I have a character, you know, I create a character, they may be an amalgam of of people I've met, conversations I've had, or things that I've seen, uh, you know, things I've read in the newspaper, but at the end of the day, they're not one specific individual, you know. I think uh, my wife puts it best is that, uh, you know, 
think God's made a couple of, couple of uh, uh, you know, molds for people. And there are types, you know, and, there, and those types that are, are people that we, you know, recognize when we watch media. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't disagree more. But um, do you mean you say uh, integrity of an image can't be achieved by just photographing what's there? No, I said, no, no, no. I said, I said photographing. No, no, no. I said, I said exactly that. Photographing what's there actually has a higher level of integrity than me photographing what's there and then imposing what I want over it. Like, let's say I photograph um, a fast food restaurant, right? If I impose, if I take a photograph of a fast food restaurant and then I say, that there's uh, all sorts of, uh, you know, that it's it's a hot it's a it's a breeding ground ground for uh, COVID, you know. Uh, not only is that somewhat libelous, but if you know I try to do something like that, it maligns the restaurant, and they they you know they have no idea. So, so that that's that it, that's but but what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is if I take a if I take a photograph of the restaurant, I'm trying to make it look, you know, the lights that they have uh I really don't like talking about pho photographs I haven't taken yet, but but if if I try to make the lights of the marquee and the sunset in the background and try to make the thing look as nice as it can, then I'm uh you know, paying tribute to them. Now, conversely, if I'm someone who has an agenda and I want to photograph, you know, a dirt in the corner that somebody missed just that one day, you know, it might be real. Yeah, but but, but that would be the mindset of someone who's approaching it with nefarious reasons. Right. There could also be another person who would just be there as a statement of fact, but uh, give it a little bit of a mm to make people understand that the way you see it. It may not be necessarily the way somebody else does. So you know, I could say well, I love, I love this, I love the the way those yellow arches arch, right? You no, know? you know. So and that could be the difference between just seeing a building and seeing a specific building, right? But if I love the way the the marquee looks, I'm going to try my best to try to make sure that the marquee uh, looks okay. the best but, that but, I can but, make but, it look. But yeah. you're shooting people. Right. And you say that you can't take the emotion out of people. You know, you're saying you, you get technical, the, technically the lighting, but you're shooting somebody who, like you just described, is going through something emotionally traumatic. Right. I didn't say I took the emotion. What I said was I'm not emotionally attached. Didn't say I wasn't mm -hmm. empathetic. I did mention empathy. Mm -hmm. Didn't mean that I'm empathetic. I'm sympathetic. I, I try to be alert about what's going on. You know, sometimes I look and go, oh, my goodness, they're, you know, they're weeping because they're winning or they're weeping because they have their name hasn't been called yet and mm -hmm. they don't know. You know, all those things are things that I look for as, as visual cues right. to make sure I, I try to get a photograph. Yes. But there is a difference between me being invested, and, and I guess the exaggeration of that would be me being so invested in one individual that if they don't win, I drop the camera and walk away because but I'm not concerned. That's not, with what, that's not what we were talking about at all. Well, what I'm talking about is the, the idea that mm -hmm. you have to detach yourself to a certain extent yeah. to accomplish yeah. your job. Yeah, Mark. I yeah, I Greg. I personally understand what Mark is getting at uh, because it's sort of um, being a newscaster and not being not maintaining your objectivity as you present the news. You can you can uh, basically you can you can cry after the camera goes off, but while hey, you're there, Walter Cronkite cried on camera. There's, yeah, there, there was, but, there's another photographer who uh, who just got an Oscar for uh, a short about. Uh, um, Oh my gosh. I think it was about George Floyd. But he said he was a he was a a, a Kappa, you know, photographer, videographer. He said the minute that this never doesn't affect me emotionally, seeing people uh -huh. blown up shot, you know, in a highly charged emotional, you know, theater, uh -huh. the moment that this doesn't affect me emotionally anymore, I need to get out. Okay. And that happened and he left. Okay. A lucrative videographer's career. Uh -huh. So I mean I just don't see how you can separate, you know, especially something that's emotionally charged as a pageant. These women are 
are just a ball of emotions. I mean, I would look for that. That's those are the shots that well, I well, yeah, some, yeah. Well, yeah. I think I think the thing is is that since I've photographed it, some are and some are not. And I think in some I mean, they're not all, you know, not every pageant uh, contestant is, is, is female either. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a variety of pageants. There's a variety of responses to the competition by the contestants. And, you know, empathy means you have empathy for, you know, each of the individuals there as opposed to, oh, that's the one I think I'm going to follow and make sure. You can't get attached in that kind of way. No, that, that's not, I don't think that's, but I'll, I'll, I'll let it go. Well, I don't think that's what I, you're I, I, Well, I think what you're saying is that the, the person uh, who knows it doesn't have any emotion at all does, you know, can't, you know, they're not feeling, they shouldn't be in the business. But what I'm saying is there's a difference between uh, feeling and feeling so much that you, are distracted so you know i don't, I don't i've it, never seen a photographer worth his salt that would get so into feeling that he can't do his job i don't understand that what you're saying well all. you just described someone who got to the point where they couldn't do their job so they left it they did their job but when they when they were no longer affected by seeing people blown up mm -hmm. then he left Prior right. to that, he was an award-winning photographer. Right. They they couldn't do it anymore, so they left. That's exactly it. They were too emotionally attached at that point to be able to continue to watch what was happening. That's not an, an attachment. That's just being human. Same. I, I think they're doing about the same thing. I'm I not. I'm not saying I'm not saying that that's not being yeah. human. Right. I'm saying I'm saying that that person got to their threshold. Yeah. I think you're both saying the same thing too. Um, take a look at this recording once it's up and see see what you think about it once you, once you okay. once you've had a chance to look at it. Yeah, go you know, ahead. Let's move, okay. Move right let's on. okay. Let's move on to mine. Okay, I'm I'm the anchor, and uh, it so be good. <laughs> yeah, and so um, full disclosure, um, I'm the tech guy, so I get a chance to see Mark's and Greg's images before we present. But for the most part, they don't get a chance to see mine because I'm the one who puts these images up. So they don't see it until now. So they'll be just as surprised as you are out there as to uh, what the images are and what the words are. So uh, here is my presentation for, and I'll, I will call it an artist statement. So um, let me start by doing this, okay? And, okay, my artwork scours our societal environments looking at emotional instigators and the resulting outcomes that often determine the ways in which we navigate the world around us. I believe our personal space extends to about a meter and a half around us. My own emotional state changes when in close quarters with others, no matter the circumstances, be it indoors or outdoors. I search for the primal within myself that begins the processes of realizing it in others being raw with my perspective, so there's no ambiguity when looking for intention in the subject matter or the point of view. Well, I have one question for you. How is the, let me ask in the first image, I, I understand, I understand the uh, self-consciousness of the second two uh, individuals you photographed. In the first one, uh -huh. I'm not sure, maybe I missed it, in right. that image, who is uh, instigating uh, you emotionally in this particular image? Wow, Mark. Okay, I my intent was not to literally spoon feed anybody as they see it. Okay. My intent was to guide you into a way of my thoughts, not to literally spoon feed you what I want you to see, but give you a taste of what you can see if and if it is what I'm seeing as well. So my my the first sentence read my artwork scours our societal environments. Right? What? Looking at emotional instigators and the resulting outcomes that often determine the ways in which we navigate the world around us. Right. Right. Well I mean I think the the, the thing is with the with the second two, I, I get the sense that someone's really, really close to your camera in a way that's, you know, kind of they're leaning into it and it looks it looks like they have a, a little bit of a snarl but maybe maybe you just caught them in a in a in a less 
compromising uh, position. And obviously the second, the third person's giving you a, you know, giving you the finger. So, I mean, you know, that, that's definitely an emotional instigator. They're, no, they're definitively his nails done and he's showing his nails. There. The, I see. That would be the best one, the best of each, right? The best of each hand. Right. right. He's yeah. like, look at, look at the, the workmanship that looked the way can you well, believe like, this? He's sharing. But he, he's actually pointing to the anvil that's about to drop on you on that corner. <laughs> um, exactly. I, I, I think uh, I, 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 I get it for the other two. I just don't, you know, because you said emotional instigators while that that first image was up. So I'm sort but of I'm, I'm, Mark, I'm scouring with Mark, you, Mark. Remember that the the the. Yeah. Greg, go ahead. You were going to say? No, no, no. Go ahead. Let her go. Right. And then I, I got it. I won't forget. Right. Because you're taking what it seems like what you're doing is you're associating one particular action or thing with a particular image. Mm -hmm. And that's not the intent. The intent is to solidify the three images with the whole statement. So the whole statement is not about an individual image. It's about all three. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. It's, right, it's I, kind of linear. I, I would have just inversed it. I would have put the I would have put the guy showing you the anvil, uh, you know, I would have put him first so that uh, you would have got that emotional instigator. And I might I may have even forgotten it, but I would have felt it by the third one. But I'm, I'm like, yeah. All right. oh, oh, you know, I would have I would have been offended. I would have been instig I would have been felt instigated. <laughs> now, Go ahead, Greg. now, now more than ever. You know, reading your 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 tenet on, you know, find 100 words, you're tasked with finding no less than 100 in support of one image or series of images. Decide to present your statement longer than you live before the viewers in your image. And when you said that first, those first two lines, it clicked for me. I was like, yeah. like I got it. You know, it was like, because she was definitely uh, in a twilight far. It was almost like a birthing, you know, she's struggling out of a womb to get yes. her space in this crowd. You know, she's, you know, this whole, I felt, I definitely felt uh, uh, theater arts, you know, uh, dyna, dynam dynamism in the image. You know, she's, mm -hmm. she's stretchy, she's in gray, but she's in color, you know, and she's surrounded by all these people. And, re and the your first words were what again? Uh, I'm sorry? Your first, the first two lines of your statement. Oh, my artwork scours our societal environments, looking at emotional instigators and the resulting outcomes that often determine the ways in which we navigate the world around us. Mm -hmm. And she is navigating, you know, and it's it is all of that that you you were talking about how this relates. It's all in that one statement, and then you continue. And then you escalated it and you started talking about social situations. Go mm -hmm. ahead, go. Can you do the next one again? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, say again? Do your, the, your next image. Oh, the second the, one, the yeah. Close yeah. up. Yeah. And you and what did you say about that one? Well, again, they're not they're not timed supposed to be a, they were just one each one was one third of the way through. So no, no, they were no, not time for anything. But, right? I understand. But right. but when when I was when I was hearing it, I, uh -huh. I was focusing on what you were saying in okay. that moment. Uh -huh. But I was also hearing, you know, struggling, you know, with <laughs> making your way through it. And sometimes, you know, there's people that get a little too close, you yeah. know, but they're also, you know, there's there's this whole societal struggling for their space, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I believe our personal space extends to about a meter and a half around us. My right. emotional state changes when in close quarters with others, no matter the circumstances, be it indoors or outdoors. Yeah, right. it's called the sphere of influence that uh, three, it's supposed to be three feet radius mm -hmm. from, the, yeah. from the center. Yeah. But, I, and, but I also But it's a little, it's a little larger these days. But I also felt what you said there in the first one. You yeah. Because it was, it was, there was no space between any, any of the people in that image uh -huh. coming forward or going away. Uh -huh. you know, and then even when there was space between the people, there was a building there. Uh -huh. You know, so all of that proximity and you know whether the image is, is not supposed to match exactly what you're saying, the continuity of what you were saying about the whole set was spot on. You know, and then <laughs> you take it back to the first statement, and then the second statement, and this guy is like almost the epitomizes. 
everything you said, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah I'm making them away. Like, like, what was that movie with uh, Dustin Hoffman? Uh, uh, Midnight Cowboys. Like, hey, uh, I'm walking here. You yeah. Know, what are you looking yeah. at? That's very they, um, you, know? you said well, like Ratso Rizzo? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, and this is what I said, I search for the primal within myself that begins the process of realizing it in others, you know? So you, I always look inward to uh -huh. see how I'm thinking, to figure out how others are thinking or possibly thinking, but not definitive, but it's, but it's, so, a, you so know. So in what way are you emotionally instigating these individuals that you're photographing? Oh, without a doubt, I'm instigating him, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and again, we are all to some degree instigating, and that's that's basically what I'm saying. We are all instigating each other, whether we know it or not, when we're outside in public. You know, when you see that that guy, I mean, unless I mean, I don't know. Are you I mean you're are you are you open to say, well, you you've already mentioned a lot of times you don't photograph by looking you find. I would I would say that he was checking your hands and he decided to uh throw you the finger because he's somebody who takes pictures i would i would be surprised if he was not someone who also took pictures he actually takes pictures but he actually stopped and talked with me see but i don't think instigate is the right word that that seems makes it sound as if you're actually you know poking folks you know like trying to create a a, a beef a situation well right that's kind of what well, i'm getting again, you, you 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 can't take the it's emotional instigator Right. And so you and I, I, I'm hoping that you don't take instigator as an affront or an aggressive stance. It's just a, something that gives a reaction, no matter how minimal the instigation is. You know, if someone winks at you, that's an instigation, but that's not any anything intent of harm. You know, uh, if you know, he just you know, he's raised his finger at me. That's an instigator. But it was up to me not to respond in a way which, you know, someone would. When when he lifted the finger, I, I moved away from camera to say, <laughs> and, and you know, and then he actually came over and talked to me, and I took two portraits of him with his friend. He's actually a fashion designer. You know, so, got a job so, of that. That, that really, yeah, it's funny because we were, I, we were talking about that in one of the previous uh, shows that uh, this is a very. Uh, uh, image aware society that uh, we live in and that yeah. uh, in that area people people know you know they see the camera and they go ah, ha, ha, you're taking my picture and they're wa they're watching your hands okay so I, I don't want to keep this too long but I just want to get uh, sort of a final thoughts on either your presentation and what how you thought your presentation went or a combination of all three uh, Greg you want to start um I've always liked uh, projects where, where uh, you know, do you, you're forced to narrow the imagery because I'm not like a machine gun photographer, but I do see a lot and I do capture a lot because my, you know, that's just the way my brain works. You know, I see, I capture a lot because, um, you know, different things mean different things to myself. You know, I mean, I've taken pictures and showed a picture that was like nothing to me and a friend would be like wow that picture speaks volumes to me can I have a print and I'm like yeah sure um but being forced to uh or 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 asked to limit it to three images and then put it put a ribbon on it with you know a certain amount of words to tie them all together mm -hmm. you know make them relate to each other and the words I, I like I like the exercise of uh you know, putting a package like that together. So didn't like it at first, but after laying it down, I'm liking it. So what do I think of it? Is that what you were asking? Well, yeah, just tell me what you think, whether overall or specific. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, Any thoughts? You know, if you don't, you don't. Yeah, but if my, you do, you do. My thoughts, especially uh, the, way, the way it started to flow from me, uh, when, I, when I picked the images, it was just, uh, you know, kind of a day in life. You know, this is this is where I am now. You know, I'm I'm uh, trying to get a handle on today. You know, I'm, I've got all of these things from yesterday that are impacting me, but I still have plans on, you know, tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. the day after. So um, that's where I found myself, and that's what I, I uh, put.
put on paper, electronic paper. So yeah, that's that's where I was. Okay, Mark, your thoughts? That's where I am. Um, I think that in this particular, uh, I think this particular prompt uh, requires uh, imagery that is uh, different from the type of imagery that I. Uh, tend to do mm -hmm. but uh if you if you did something like this again I'll, I'll i'll fall in line a little bit and provide some uh artsy craftsy stuff for you artsy but, uh, craftsy uh, oh. wow. <laughs> what you think of it well the reason why i say it that way is because i mean if you're that i mean contemptuous meaning no no and I'm, what i mean by that is images that i generate myself purely for, you know, exploring some big idea about, you know, you know, visual about vision and how the, you know, how the camera, you know, writes to its sensitive, to its sensor and things like that. You know, all the things that are, are part of the art uh, world rather than uh, someone who's real engaged. World. Well, no, I was going to say someone who's engaged in providing, you know, images for, you know, a living. You know, and I, and I don't say it like a living, but I mean like, you know, the day in, day out kind of stuff, as opposed to, uh, you know, the serious uh, artistic endeavor that isn't so much concerned with making the subject always look as, as, as good as it can be. Right. But to some degree, we've had word associations about before. Making the image look as good as it can be. I mean, that's I'm sorry. What was that, Greg? I'm sorry. I didn't. Taking any photograph, any photographer of his worth his salt is always trying to make the image look as good as it could be. It sounds a little condescending. No, I, I think what's happening is that you're uh, using the, the the term as good as it can be in the broadest possible sense. And I'm using it in the uh, sense of as a uh, commercial venture. And so I think what's happening is I say making the subject look as good as possible. Uh, there are criteria for the different types as, of photography. As opposed to artsy photography that doesn't really pay the bills. No, I didn't say that either. I mean, what I'm saying is artsy <laughs> photography that, that, has, that has, different, it has different visual concerns. And I, and I think it's, uh, you know, very well illustrated. I mean, if you were photographing the the first car with the cover on it uh and using that for uh, an advertisement for an automobile that would probably fall in the same category as you know one of those george lois you know oh you have to know what the car is uh because on these three weeks in time magazine we're running an ad where we're not even showing you the car you know uh, but almost everyone else would require that you show the product that you're trying to sell. Right, but that that's not my that's not my not my necessarily my purview. But my right. my job is to create an art from what I see. Now, what, right. what a car manufacturer does with it is their vision. But if when they see that image with what I had, you know, behind it, like like what Kenny was saying, was that. This means something to me, and I'm going to create it to look like this. Right. But if they say to you, you need to photograph the car, and you right. present now, if them, I, if and if you present them with that studio, one image. I could shoot something in the studio. Right, right, right. What I'm saying, but if you present. Take a lot. Right. But I'm saying if you present them with that one image of the car completely covered, that would be uh, something that would have to have been uh, discussed ahead of time. Or you would find yourself right, in the but no, no, it wouldn't. Right, if but it was, I think if it was a concept, you know, and right. they said, "Bring me a concept," and I say, "This is my concept." You come up with whatever else you're, you know. We're not discussing. They're not giving me storyboards. You're already saying, you know, this is a commercial venture. You have to show the car in the best light. No, you don't. There, I've seen so many advertisements where they never show the car at all. <laughs> But recently you think about it i don't i don't know about i don't, I don't know if that's a recent thing i think i kind of alluded to that with those old george lois style ads from uh many 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 years ago that doesn't that doesn't seem to be a current i saw, I saw one commercial recently where i had no clue what was being uh, sold 
until the last minute when the logo came up and there was still no item. Yeah. You're talking I, about Google. Was, I mean, Google does things like that because they, they're selling a lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. I think it could have been a lifestyle, but it's still, you couldn't associate it with merchandise until the logo came up. I don't remember what logo it was, but I was, I was blown away by that. And I was shocked um, because I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. And I think that was the intent, and which was to, Right, but but but, oh, Google, I it, but unfortunately, but, I don't. But here's remember. the thing: I mean, if it is a Google ad, I, I think I remember seeing something like that for Google. But Google is an intangible. Well, I mean, it's tangible because we all use it. But at the end of the day, it, it's it's you know the actuality of search for this, search for that. At this point in history, it tends to seem a little mundane. So you you have to show the benefit of that experience. Mundane? Are you kidding me? Wow. Okay. It seems a little mundane. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Um, so <laughs> I, I had this question, and I wanted to wait until both of you finished your closing statements to say which came first, the images the or the words, or the words for your presentation? Which came first, the images or the words? Oh, the images, definitely. Images definitely came came first for me. <laughs> Greg, I'm trying to think. It was it was kind of fifty fifty. Because, okay. Because um, when I, I didn't understand I didn't understand your uh, precept until you explained it to me again. Okay. And then when I had to narrow it down, uh -huh. I mean, the images, I can't say the images came first because when I, I thought of it, okay, then yes, I'll say the image came first because that, okay. that was the, that was the, that was the seed because I saw the, the, the first covered car and um, that's what triggered the, if not now, when. Okay. So would that be a practice that you would subscribe for anyone going forward that they, uh, have their images first and then think of words later or does it really matter i think it does matter um, okay you do you create do you make the images support the words or do you make the words to support the images it depends on depends on the the project sometimes the pictures come first sometimes the words come first and it's fun to match the pictures to the words you know and depending on the project that's that's what I, that's where i am because okay. Sometimes the pictures, you know, because I've, I've worked, you know, in the commercial ad ad stuff where they say, this is what we want to sell, you know, and you have to do that. Or yeah. And on the other side is like, well, we're not sure I, what we want, but give us some ideas. But I, but I think I think what the way you're phrasing that is is the concept and the words uh, are being used interchangeably in your question. I think, I think, I guess what you're really asking is, is it the photograph first that you happen upon, or is there a, a, a the, 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 the concept uh, or the, the construct of that photo being the most important? Meaning, um, if you're going to photograph buildings in New York, do you walk around? I, I did buildings already. If you're going to photograph, um, you know, manhole covers in New York, do you do you walk around looking for different manhole covers and photographing them, or do you find yourself just photographing manhole covers and you've got a collection of them, and so you've got these manhole covers, so now you're going to do something with them? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you can always add the copy. Was yeah. Like, your assignment was to do that yeah. topic, but, yeah. I mean, but, 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 but that, you know, is it a con is it conceptual? Just a second, Greg. Don't just a second, our... Greg. Hold on for go, just a go second. Ahead. Go ahead. I'm Mark. Finish. No, I was just I was just saying. I mean, I guess the question. I guess I have a question that, you know, are you know, are you, um, I mean, are you wondering, you know, if someone has a sunset photograph, you know. Which is which is comes first, the idea that I'm going to photograph a series of sunsets or the sunset photo, mm -hmm. you know? and, mm -hmm. I, yeah. and I think Greg's right when he says that it, it, it depends on what it is. And I guess you know the mind works in different ways. Sometimes your photography, your random photography, will inspire uh, real projects, and sometimes real yes. projects. Uh, inspire words and sometimes yes. words inspire yes. you know, random photography and yes. so it's a it's you know it's a it's a cycle right right but I, I would <laughs> that, 
um, as as a, a writer who needs imagery would probably write the words first before they got the images. Oh yes, for right. what I would do. It's, you always, right. you, for me, it's always the idea of uh, it's the idea of some characters interacting. You know, whenever whatever I write, it's always you know, and then what what's the voice of those individuals, mm -hmm. uh, and how do they uh, how do they express themselves in uh, any given circumstance. You know, and, and that's really that's really it. And then, you know, the actual circumstance can kind of be a secondary, you know. Yeah. OK. Hey, Greg, you were going to say something. I cut you off. I apologize. Do you I, remember what it was? I was just going to say, you know, if they want, um, you know, and, uh, you know, they would hire an artistic photographer to shoot a commercial image and vice versa. You know, if they're looking for something next level or outside the box, they'll get a commercial artist, you know. Now, if you want a, uh, um, or vice versa, they'll, 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 they'll choose a um, editorially or whatever, publication-wise or whatever, or uh, you'll get somebody who, should, who does think outside the box, you know, okay. an artist, artist, like, like, a, like Warhol kind of nailed it when he just did the repetition. He was making a social commentary with his Campbell series, you know, and then they picked up on it and it became pop art. You know? Right. But he was a guy who was a graphic designer for many years first and understood the, 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 the validity of the graphic design of a, of a soup can and how the place that those type and Brillo boxes and things like that. Now those, how those, Ordinary everyday items are both overlooked and then considered vital in the society you lived in. Yeah, mm. kind of interesting though that. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, Go ahead. I don't. I, hmm? Interesting that what? I'm sorry. I yeah. Never mind. I I don't, don't worry about it. Uh, we're 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 running close over now, and I just don't want to uh, go over too long. Um, but I just wanted to. I wanted your opinions because I wanted the people out there who are listening to get the essence of what we're talking about, which is, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg in this particular instance, you know. And it's the chicken, it, by the way. <laughs> okay. Yes. The right. It won't be a chicken yeah, it won't, until it's a chicken. Yeah. It won't be a chicken until it's a chicken. I, I got it, you. It nailed so. the grass. I, I, think, I think the answer really is the logo is what came first. And then you, <laughs> then you source the chickens and eggs simultaneously <laughs> and get the source. <laughs> Okay. I mean, and to, to Mark's point, in a way, uh, to answer that, um, there are, as a street shooter, uh, you would assume that I go out there and I just shoot random images. And that's actually not the case most of the time. As I think I've alluded to both of you guys, I have a running list that I've kept of projects that I have or concepts and ideas that I've thought about over the years that I continue to go towards when I'm outside. And so the concepts comes way before the image in most most cases, right? It's the concept and I follow through, whether I'm, I achieve it for a day or not. And it's a long-term concept, so it doesn't have to be completed in a week, a month, a year. It could take years to do, right? So therefore that is. So the concept is there, then the images come next and then the words come to support the concept, not the images. It comes to support the concept, which was what instigated the imagery. So in a way, I'm saying that the words come first for me because it begins with a word or a series of words, such as um, I could say blue skies. That's, my, that's what I'm going out for. Therefore, I'm going out to achieve blue skies, right? So the words of the blue skies came first, the concept, then the imagery, then the supporting words to support the concept. Right, and then Adobe the came up with the blue sky replacement Cool. <laughs> okay. okay. I want to thank everybody out there for tuning in. If they've kept this long, I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Uh, we thank you for tuning in. We'd like you to subscribe. So please do so if you enjoy what you're hearing. Please share it with anyone else that you think would enjoy information such as we discussed. We typically don't talk tech. We talk artistic. So you'll notice that our slants in our conversations are usually artistic, esoteric. They're not definitive on any technical aspect. Maybe once in a while it will be. For the most part, it's about theory. That's where we originated from. That's what we continue to do. Uh, we think, I personally think that 
following through on a technical basis, uh, you run out of you run out of technical you run out of tech real quick. But I think concepts and ideas. Uh, well, Marcus shaking his head because he knows that every year a new camera, a new tech comes up. But hey, not we anymore. Don't, we don't even know days. if that's sustainable yeah. or not. <laughs> but uh, I thank you for tuning in. My name is Kenneth Nelson. I'm here with Mark Skinner and Gregory Clayhorn. We are the three Black Pratt grads. Photo talk. We'll see you the it's next not time. The camera. It's what you do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment if you want to talk with us. We'll 